Sounds good. Uh, well, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Johnny, and I'm the National Sales Manager with St. Francis Herb Farm. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to our host, Dr. Brianna Lutz. Dr. Brianna is a naturopathic doctor and registered herbalist uh, based in Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, with an expertise in botanical medicine, she educates on the clinical application of herbs as the brand education manager and medical advisor for St. Francis Herb Farm. Uh, our webinar for today is Tiny and Mighty Forces of Nature, introducing our new kids line, and I will pass it on to Dr. Brianna um, to get going on this uh, very exciting webinar. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, just a few um, housekeeping items um, to kind of set the tone for the presentation. Um, if you're not super familiar with Zoom, have a peek at the different um, at, at the bar that tells you the different features of Zoom. Uh, feel free to pop in the chat and let us know where you're joining us from, maybe something you're excited about with this webinar. Um, and then we also have a Q&A box. So if you have questions, throughout the presentation. My preference is to pop them in the Q&A box. That way we can just sort them and make sure that they kind of jump in the queue. Um, and that way we don't miss anything. Sometimes when people are really engaged in the chat or they're saying hello, um, that we I, I want to make sure that we don't miss any, any of those questions. Um, based on the content, like I feel like this is a pretty interactive presentation. Um, it's fairly product-based because I wanted to do a good service to uh, our refresh and our rebrand um, and really highlight all of the products that are encompassed in our entire kids line. So we won't be going into any like one particular topic in 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 particular, um, but essentially it'll be the whole line um, and the different products that are, are featured or kind of encompassed in our in our children's formulation. So uh, feel free to pop stuff in the q and I'll check in kind of at the end of each slide and Johnny will be monitoring the chat and he'll also be monitoring the Q&A to kind of curate the, the conversation. Um, we're projected to be about an hour today. I know historically we've um, gone way over that in terms of the conversation because you always have such great questions uh, for me. Uh, keep me on my toes um, and always try and stump me with botanical medicine, which is always fun. Um, but yeah, so feel free, pop, pop in the in the Q&A. We'll aim to be, you know, about 45 minutes and then leave some room for, for questions. Um, and then we'll um, talk about just an offering um, that we're, um, we will have with, with this webinar as well. So uh, as Johnny mentioned, tonight's webinar is Tiny and Mighty Forces of Nature. Um, so this is A, referring to children. Um, and one thing that I really, really love about botanical medicine in children is that they are very, very responsive and very, very resilient when it comes to plant medicine and being very responsive to these different, you know, to this particular modality. Um, so the different products that we're featuring is aiming to power that resilience, the growth and energy of your little ones. And also when we talk about this tiny and mighty forces of nature, you'll notice that adorable little ladybug. <laughs> And you'll see kind of infiltrated throughout the whole product line, not just um, ladybugs, but different insects. Um, and this is, again, tiny and mighty forces of nature um, that not only aid in our ecosystem, but through um, botanical medicine or plant medicine as well. Um, so through pollination and or uh, our entire ecosystem. And so all of our products will actually have a little fact uh, about these various insects and and I think that's really wonderful to be engaging children, not only with their medicine, but also with like nature as a whole or how these other little tiny forces of nature, maybe that they relate to, um, but these tiny little forces of nature are impacting or supporting, you know, botanical medicine. So um, I think that's really fantastic to have them engage in their own medicine. And I also think that is a unique aspect of using plants plant medicine or botanical medicine is that children are engaging with their medicine and they're experiencing it. 
So it's not necessarily like a chewable or a gummy or a capsule if if kids are able to swallow those, um, that they're actually tasting and experiencing it, sometimes to a bit of the detriment. And again, we try and make these products as tasty and kid-friendly as possible, but they aren't candy, right? This is medicine. But we can talk about um, these different applications of using these various uh, formulations in those kiddos um, and maybe increasing uh, compliance with that. Um, kind of that uh, it tastes nasty, but it works. Uh, it could be true for some of these products. Um, I'm I'm one of those people who actually really enjoys the taste of like various botanicals. But again, this is a way that children are interacting um, with, with their medicine. Um, before we kind of move into the different formulations, um, and I'll just show you our list here of what we'll get into. Um, a lot of these formulations are actually what we call tinctures. Um, so if you've never been on a webinar with St. Francis before, or if you've never um, really used botanical medicine, a tincture is an alcohol extraction of a herb. So all herbs um, will have different constituents or different compounds that have a medicinal action in them. And in order to access or to make that constituent active or available um, to absorb and to digest, we need some type of a solvent. So when we think about um, uh, a tea, we're using water as the solvent or the extractant, but certain constituents aren't what we call polar, so we can't actually extract those constituents with water. So we need something that has a different uh, composition, and so alcohol is one of those things that is able to effectively extract those key constituents that have a medicinal action. Um, so I know some parents can be quite concerned, like, should I be giving my child uh, a tincture because it has alcohol in it. Now, through different food scientists, they've compared the amount of alcohol that's in a tincture and have said that it is the same amount as in a serving of orange juice. So how different fruits um, ferment, again, they can create different alcohols. So the equivalency of a serving of orange juice is the amount of alcohol that you'd be getting in the dosage of these various tinctures. Um, and again, not not all the time will you be able to taste that alcohol. And I would say, especially um, our tinctures, they're very herb forward. Other companies I know I've tasted, um, you can really, really taste the alcohol. However, this, I'd say the herb is at the foremost um, of, of the taste. Or again, if we're adding different juices or honey um, or vegetable glycerin, um, that can be included um, to adjust kind of the, the, the palate or the taste of those various tinctures. Um, so some people will also put it in alcohol or sorry, in, in hot water to evaporate off that alcohol. And again, it's just a different application. So it could be a hot beverage for those children, um, as opposed to just straight tincture. Um, I'm more of a purist. It's kind of like the baby bird just drop it in the mouth. Um, and ki kids are, um, as I mentioned, incredibly resilient. I find them to be um, more open to or willing to try or actually like very tolerant um, of, of tinctures compared to like grown adult men. <laughs> so like the classic man cold, right? So kids are awesome. And again, I think if we make like a huge deal about it or like, oh, it tastes really bad or we try and adjust that always, I think this is a, a marker and, and we um, over we overcomplicate it for the kids because they actually are very, very tolerant to these different um, applications. Okay, so the products that we're going to be talking through, um, the first is Tilia Calm, um, and then we're moving into more of our immune products. So definitely our line is very um, immune focused, again, because kids respond super well um, to herbs in their application for the immune system. And we'll talk about the benefits from a proactive versus a reactive standpoint uh, when it comes to the immune system. So we actually have a, a twofold effect when it comes to the immune system. Um, and then we have some adjunct products that we can use either in that proactive or that reactive phase or both, um, or may have additional benefits kind of beyond uh, the immune system. So Tilia Calm, 
Teleocom kids, this is our support for the nervous system and notely sleep. Um, so when we talk about different herbs that are working on our nervous system, this is a dose dependent factor. So oftentimes lower doses are going to have a more mild effect on the nervous system. So we can see this as being more calming or what we call anxiolytic or anxiety reducing um, can be used for restlessness as well. Um, sometimes hyperactivity, although sometimes hyperactivity is a result of um, under stimulation. So we don't necessarily need to suppress uh, their nervous system. But again, if they're more agitated or restless, um, not necessarily attention deficit or hyperactive, um, this can be really quite useful um, using it throughout the day. Now, as a dose dependent factor, if we're increasing the dosage, um, it's going to have a more profound or a stronger effect on the nervous system. So then it becomes more of a sedative or a sleep supporting agent. Um, so we can use this for like accommodative agent. We can use this as a sleep aid. And often, Oftentimes, too, when we're looking at these different um, herbs that work on the nervous system, uh, some of them can have what we call carminative effects um, or can work on the nervous system in the digestive tract. So when we're seeing mild digestive disturbances, so dyspepsia, so like acid reflux or heartburn, gas, bloating, um, it can be actually really quite useful for lessening a, that abdominal pain, or they'll call it like their tummy pains. Um, and in kids, it's pretty nonspecific with their digestive symptoms. Um, and sometimes they aren't able necessarily to communicate about those digestive disturbances. Um, it's pretty global, or it's like the whole abdomen, they might notice pain or indigestion. Um, but again, also from an emotional perspective, um, um, vague kind of abdominal symptoms can actually be anxiety. Um, and I have seen this quite a bit in practice um, that, again, kids will feel anxiety in their gut or they'll say that they have a stomach ache because they don't really know how to intellectualize that. Um, so it can be mechanistically effective for both, um, or again, it could be the, the same underlying factor, right? So it could be this nervous system, this restlessness, this anxiety that's then presenting as digestive um, symptoms as well. So really great in helping um, kiddos to settle down before bed um, and use as a gentle sleep aid. Again, you can use it throughout the day in those lower doses for um, more mild support on their nervous system. So uh, before bed is a really good time, again, if we're using it as a sleep aid and building it into their nighttime routine, right? So if they have bath time, if they have an evening snack, um, if they're winding down with stories or songs, um, this would be a good time to just add to some hot water. Um, you could put a bit of honey in there as well. I would say from a palatability perspective of the entire line, this is probably the most challenging um, in terms of compliance. So that might be beneficial to add in like a bit of honey um, or a little bit of juice um, so that you know, kids, kids will, will tolerate a little bit better. Um, grape juice or like that green grape juice often tends to be, um, beneficial and getting like a sugar-free version of that or a low sugar version of that, um, would be, you know, beneficial to, to add that. But again, sometimes it's just baby bird in the mouth and they do really quite well with that. Okay. So now we're shifting gears into talking about the immune system. So again, we talked about this proactive versus the reactive state um, when it comes to supporting the immune system. So we believe that a balanced immune system is your strongest immune system. And you'll see a little bit more um, what I mean about that. So our deep immune kids, um, this is looking to strengthen and balance the immune system. So the immune system can be under functioning, uh, where we see this as being like frequent colds and flus. Um, this could be chronic ear infections, um, you know, maybe babies that were born premature or maybe were intolerant um, to, to or didn't have access to breast milk. Um, so they didn't really build those different immune complexes in their body during like those key kind of stages of immune system development. Um, or we can see it being as more of an overreactive immune system system where we're seeing
seeing um, allergies, where we're seeing eczema um, or other kind of skin um, conditions, even like psoriasis that we'll see. So again, it's kind of like a teeter totter where we want that immune system to be balanced. We don't want it underreactive and we don't want it overreactive. So what's really unique about deep immune and if you've seen this in our adult products, because um, we do have that deep immune original, um, this is a more simplified, more kid-friendly version of that formulation. So rather than all of these different immune adaptogens or immune stimulants, we've really dialed it down to the key herbs that we have really well really good research or really well studied in their application in children. Um, so the two herbs would be astragalus and codonopsis. So those two herbs synergistically look to balance and strengthen that immune system. So we're preventing, again, like those frequent colds and flus, we can reduce that overreactivity of the immune system and it's bringing this more balanced immune system forward um, and really working on what we call the innate immune system. So this is um, kind of our quickest reaction of our immune system. This is the most like um, general or non-specific component of the immune system. So even when we're, when we're being exposed to what we call like novel infections, especially as children are building their immune system, they're getting exposed to all of these different viruses or um, bacteria. And again, their body is able now to um, build an appropriate immune response and then also look to to create memory to that um, immune or that um, that pathogen or that infection as well. So the again, those different herbs like the astragalus, like the codonopsis, are increasing key white blood cells or key components of our immune system. Um, and these different immune markers like T cells or B cells, again, that are looking to build uh, a memory. So if we're exposed to that infection in the future, the body's um, able to um, react a little bit more quickly. So um, other kind of key ingredients um, within this deep immune kids. Um, so obviously it is a tincture. So we have this certified organic alcohol. Um, we do have a bit of uh, vegetable glycerin in here as well. So it keep, makes it a little bit sweeter. And if you're very astute and you have a peek at the label, uh, you'll notice that it says whey on the label. And, and I just want to clarify that, that that whey is not actually like a milk protein, um, like what we think about with whey. This is just a mislabeling or kind of a, a mis communication when applying for that um, NPN or natural product number. Um, but the component is actually colostrum. So colostrum is um, derived, uh, I, believe, I believe it's from goat and, and maybe um, Johnny can clarify, but our colostrum is looking to build these different immune complexes. So especially kids who were born again, kind of prematurely, or they didn't develop um, their immune system as robustly um, as, as their, their peers or their counterparts, this is looking to actually help to build those different immune complexes that they could be lacking. Um, so a lot of people call this like the secret sauce in, in, in the formulation. Um, and, uh, I know some adults actually that use this because again, kind of that secret sauce, they've used different herbs. They've used the, the deep immune original, but for whatever reason, especially because they were one who had kind of a, a premature immune system, um, they respond actually really quite well to the deep immune kids formulation. So, the dosing will vary per age. There's different approaches to dosing in herbal medicine. Sometimes it's by weight. Um, sometimes it's by age. So we actually go off of off of age. Um, so children two to four, five to nine, children to adolescent, and then uh, dosing appropriately from those recommendations. Um, I, I, ideally, like doses should be taken twice daily um, in a little water or juice on an empty stomach. But I would say consistency is better than perfection. So even if we're getting this dose in once a day, if we're having it, you know, close to that bedtime snack, or it's close to breakfast in the morning, like don't worry about it. 
just get it in the kids. Um, if that's, you know, baby birding on their way to the bus in the morning, if that's with their evening snack or their vitamin D or whatever that looks like, um, getting in again, cause that consistency is better than, um, perfection. I would say now, um, the, the ideal way of dosing deep immune, deep immune in general, not just the kids is, is looking to do, um, almost like a rotation. So ideally we're doing this for about three weeks and then we'll give uh, a week break and then we'll cycle back and do the three weeks and then the one week break. Um, I kind of compare this to like wearing an ankle brace in games versus like taking off the ankle brace in practice. Right. So we're challenging the immune system without that support there. Um, and so that actually just builds more stimulation that builds more, um, productivity within the immune system. Um, and I find it creates more of a robust effect or more of a balanced immune system in, in that case. So sometimes, and I'm, I have to confirm it again, it depends on if you're using it with multiple children or depending on how old your child is. Um, if that bottle is lasting you three weeks, then just finishing off the bottle and giving it a week break. Um, and I think that's a good application uh, to do in that way. I'm just pausing if there's any anything in the chat, but I think it's been pretty straightforward so far. Okay. Okay, so um, this is uh, Deep Immune Kids, but this is an alcohol-free version. So if for whatever reason you didn't feel comfortable serving um, the original tincture um, to, to your kiddo, again, as we talked about, like the alcohol um, comparison of like a serving in orange juice is, is comparable. But if we wanted to do an alcohol-free alcohol -free version, this is an option. So this is made with um, a different berry juice. Um, so it's actually aronia berry. Um, and so it adjusts the flavor and adjusts the palate, but aronia is actually quite high in antioxidants. Um, so it does have some additional support for the immune system. Uh, and it also has honey or organic honey that I know we have some I don't think we've totally rolled out where we're actually sourcing the, the honey from our farm, but we do have um, new hives on our company farm now, um, which is really exciting. So we're hoping to roll that into our products as well. Um, so again, organic honey will have a benefit for the immune system as well. Um, so the different components, again, the, the propolis pieces, um, or again, just the um, uh, antioxidant or antimicrobial components of honey that are aiding in this version as well. Now, when we talk about any alcohol-free version, we're still creating a tincture, okay? That alcohol is really important for that, like that solvent aspect or that reaction to be able to pull those constituents out from the herb. And then what happens is we evaporate the alcohol off. So then what we're left with is a alcohol-free version. And then we're adding different components to help with stabilization, such as the aronia berry, you know, such as the honey. Um, and this also has um, vegetable glycerin in it as well. Some, some companies will make glycerates where they're actually using glycerin as the solvent to extract those constituents, but they're actually less efficacious than if we were to create a tincture, because again, not all constituents can be effectively um, extracted with glycerin or with water. Um, so they do need an alcohol to be able to extract that. Um, and especially when we talk about echinacea, in the upcoming slides, this is super key when it comes to using alcohol as a solvent. So same indications, same applications as the deep immune kids. Um, we're looking to strengthen and balance the immune system. Again, working on that innate immune system. So that non-specific, general, quick acting component of the immune system. So we're looking to prevent viral infections, colds and flu, um, as well as um, reduce the incidence of allergies or eczema by kind of calming the immune system in that regard. So uh, again, we're incorporating the components with the astragalus and the codenopsis, those key um, immune adaptogens or immune herbs that are working to support um, the overall uh, immune system.
this too. Um, like the deep immune kids has that, um, sweet way or that colostrum that works on supporting those different immune complexes or immunoglobulins. Okay. So vitamin D, I probably heard a lot about vitamin D, um, but vitamin D, um, is definitely about supporting uh, in the development of a resilient immune system, um, not just from an immune system perspective, but again, maintenance of like bones and teeth and calcification of those different organ systems. Um, so definitely key for development. And again, getting your calcium from various food sources um, in that maintenance, again, bones and teeth, but again, vitamin D really beneficial for supporting a resilient immune system. Now we clarify with the vitamin D, um, D3, uh, because D3 is actually the more active type um, of vitamin D in our system. And we actually convert um, to vitamin D3 um, within our system. But ideally, when we're dosing externally with a supplement, um, we're wanting it in that vitamin D3 format. Okay. So if you ever find a vitamin D that says vitamin D2, do not take that product and maybe have a look at the whole brand, because if they're not up on the research with using vitamin D3, um, you might not be wanting to use some of their other products as well. Right. So, uh, vitamin D3 is the important piece and vitamin D is actually a fat soluble vitamin. Okay. Um, so I find, especially clinically, and we do a lot of vitamin D testing in our practice. So we're actually validating this different applications or the way that we're prescribing vitamin D to our patients. Like, is it actually increasing their blood levels of vitamin D? Um, so personally, what I found in practice is that vitamin D is better absorbed and better at increasing your blood levels of vitamin D when it's in some type of a fat. Okay. So fat soluble vitamin in a fat carrier. So ours is suspended in MCT or medium chain triglycerides derived from coconut, um, in order to stabilize it and help with absorption. So when you're taking those drops, you're already getting absorption in the mouth. And again, that oil is acting as a carrier, um, in, in incorporating that absorption of the vitamin D. Now we do incorporate a natural rosemary extract, and this is essentially a uh, first or a natural type of preservative um, because anything that is um, fat derived has the capacity to go rancid. Um, so this is just an extra, um, extra kind of touch that we're using uh, in order to make that more stable and, and prevent any rancidity within, within the product. Um, so for me uh, too, like when I look at a vitamin D, I'm like, is it in a fat? Is it the vitamin D3 format? Um, and a, another thing that I also really pay attention to uh, with any type of fat, is it in a glass bottle? right? Because anything, um, any type of fat in a plastic bottle, is it going to pull or leach the different um, components, whether that be BPAs, BPBs, um, that um, are, are different chemicals that can actually suppress the immune system, right? Or suppress hormones. Um, so if it's in a glass bottle, that's a, another check for me. And again, it's, uh, ours is an amber glass bottle. So then it's preventing like light exposure, um, or creating that rancidity or, um, any type of denaturing of that product as well. Um, so pro tip, keep this bottle in a visible place as a reminder to take daily. Um, some people keep it by their coffee makers. Again, not necessarily, uh, your caffeine fiend kids that <laughs> are incorporating that into the habit but keeping on it on the counter. Um, so you're seeing it every day, prepping your kids' lunches or breakfast. So you're just um, giving them uh, the drop. So one drop is a thousand international units. Um, and again, the dosage can vary per age, um, but I'd say a uh, thousand international units for kiddos is a, a fairly standard recommendation. Uh, sometimes when we're looking at pediatric doses, it's about half of that or about 400 I use. Um, and if that's a concern, or if we're looking at doing like 400 IUs, especially in, in infants, just take the thousand every other day. Um, cause then it's your, I actually find that the pediatric dosing, um, or that 400 I use is more expensive. So just get the thousand I use. And if they're recommended 400, I use, you know, every day, then just do a thousand every other day, um, in those kiddos. And it, 
it works really well. Um, sometimes if it's not on the kitchen counter, I tell people to pop it by their toothbrush or where they brush their teeth. Um, ideally, I like having or recommending it in the morning. But again, it's all about compliance. When are you going to be able to take it? Um, I've seen it very, 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 very rarely. I've only seen it twice in practice that people have found it more stimulating. So that when they had it before bed, uh, they noticed a change in their sleep. But again, it's two years and, and, and a few years of practice. Um, so again, the, the vitamin D uh, for kiddos, uh, really supportive for that resilient immune system. Now we look at that as being part of the proactive, but also maintaining a uh, vitamin D if your kiddo is getting a cold or a flu. Okay. Um, so it's not something that you have to stop if, if they get sick, continue it. And sometimes we, we may increase it. Um, again, talking with your practitioner or anybody who's prescribing these things if they are. Um, but however, if kiddos are getting sick, uh, we're going to stop the deep immune. And then we're going to jump into a product that's actually going to stimulate their immune system. So that's when I like to look at these different echinacea based products. Um, and with St. Francis's echinacea, we're using a combination of two different species. So echinacea angustifolia and echinacea purpurea um, through optimal extraction, uh, through optimal compilation of these two different species. Um, and it actually prolongs the effect or prevents the denaturing of these different constituents when they're actually both used together. So this is looking to be like the most powerful echinacea available on the market. Um, and they're, it's made with these uh, Canadian grown organic echinacea. So again, that's the basis of all of our echinacea products, or when we see that echinacea plus, um, that plus is essentially A, that it's, we're using those two species, and B, that it's plus these other immune stimulating or supporting ingredients within those products. So again, there are a few variations that we could look to in this fight back. Um, so Echinacea Plus Kids, um, this again, as I said, would be taken at the first sign of cold or flu. Um, for some kiddos, it's you notice a change in either their temperament or their energy. Maybe they're getting more congested. Um, maybe they're talking about a tickle in their throat or they're clearing their throat more, or maybe they're tugging at their ear or that's kind of a telltale sign that they're going to get sick. That's we want to stop the deep immune and we want to jump on the, the echinacea to just stimulate the immune system to, to fight off the infection. So as I mentioned, it's the most powerful echinacea available. So we're seeing that purpurea and that augustifolia, those two different strains um, delivering both antiviral and antibacterial protection, um, plus this maximum bioavailability. So meaning A, when we're using both those species, they're being absorbed more readily and B, they aren't broken down as quickly in our system. So they're able to act um, and stimulate the immune system for a longer time. So um, we also have, again, that colostrum or that uh, sweet whey within this product. Um, again, it's supporting those immunoglobulins. So we're building out those different immune cells um, to combat or to fight that infection. Um, and it is also formulated with anise for more of a kid-friendly taste. Uh, this one also has the vegetable glycerin. So there is... Um, like added sweetness to it as well. Um, so a little bit more palatable for, for those kiddos. And again, there's your cute little butterfly with a fact about insects. Okay. Okay. So then we also have an alcohol-free version of this Echinacea Plus Kids. Okay. So in our proactive, we have our original formula and then an alcohol-free. In this reactive, we also have our original formula and then an alcohol-free version. So rather than like the berry component, like the erronea berry in that deep immune, we're seeing elderberry um, as the like adjunct or additional herb within this product. Um, so again, we're creating that tincture, we're evaporating off that alcohol, and then we're adding the additional benefit of elderberry within this product. 
Now, elderberry is a fantastic antiviral. It is one of those true antivirals. Again, there's a lot of herbs that are touted being um, antiviral, but it's just because they stimulate the immune system, but they don't directly work on the virus or viral mechanisms or replication. But elderberry is one of those true antivirals um, and it is antimicrobial immune stimulating. So it's a really, really good option. And it's still fairly tasty. Like it's one of those herbs that is like as an antimicrobial, as an antiviral, it actually still tastes good. Um, and it has a bit of that sourness to it, which, which I quite like from, from a herbal perspective, um, but really, really great formulation uh, for kids. So, and, and two, sometimes it's just a preference, right? So some kiddos might really like um, the Echinacea Plus for kids. Um, and some kids might like the one with the elderberry in it, regardless of what has alcohol or not. So it might just be what they like better. Um, again, if there are more of like a viral nature versus like bacterial, where if the kids are more sinusy um, and quite bacterial or even fungal, where it's like thick green mucus and things like that, maybe they might respond better to just the straight echinacea plus kids. Um, or if they're more like virally, um, maybe they respond a bit better with, with that elderberry. But again, they're both incorporating um, that strongest available um, echinacea combination. And again, the dosing will vary for um, the age. Okay. So then we're shifting into either adjunct products or sometimes, you know, kids respond really, really well to um, these various formulations, either based off of where those symptoms are presenting um, or their, their concerns or just um, what you have access to and how you want to target and um, work um, in supporting your, your kiddo here. So first is our elderberry cough syrup. Okay. Um, so this product actually preceded like the alcohol free version of the um, echinacea plus elderberry. And we, with this cough syrup, we do have an adult version and then we have a kid version as well. And while you'll get some benefit of like stimulating the immune system and working on the underlying mechanisms of that infection, so being antimicrobial, being immune stimulating, um, this is very, very targeted towards those symptoms associated with cough. So in a pinch, like if they have a cold or flu, but they don't really have a cough, like certainly you could use this, but definitely before like the echinacea and all the different components that are in this formulation, but definitely, definitely it's geared towards cough. Um, so this is an all natural cough syrup, uh, form formula made with elderberry. Again, so you have that antiviral, antimicrobial, immune stimulating properties of that elderberry um, with wild cherry bark. Um, and this is blended with honey and different essential oils. Uh, so wild cherry bark is a wonderful herb when it comes to cough because it does something that will seem kind of counterintuitive. Uh, but what it does is it calms a spasmodic cough so we call this an antitussive, right? So we're suppressing a cough while promoting a productive cough to help clear infection. Okay. So you're like, okay, well, it is an antitussive, but it's also um, supporting a cough. So it's reducing the spasmodic ineffectual cough, more of like that irritation um, or like that throat irritation. So again, you're kind of coughing, 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 but it's very ineffectual. That's the type of cough that like keeps your kid up at night, but it's also promoting a productive cough to be able to expel any type of immune debris or whether that be related to the actual infection in the lung or mucus that is trying to clear that infection. So it's getting out of our system, right? We still want to support these natural mechanisms of our body trying to fight infection. 
um, but having that symptom relief associated with it. So it has this dual purpose of suppressing an ineffectual cough, but promoting a productive one. So while cherry bark is super unique in that, I don't think there's uh, anything like it, either from a herbal perspective or even uh, an over-the-counter thing. Um, typically, what we're seeing from an over-the-counter cough syrup is going to be just cough suppression, cough suppression, which can be helpful with sleep. But again, this is working on both that immune-stimulating antimicrobial, but then expelling um, that mucus or immune debris that is kind of perpetuating um, that infection. Um, and it tastes good, right? Like wild cherry bark, it does have that like kind of cherry quality to it. Uh, so great tasting relief of cold and flu symptoms uh, formulated for children. We talked about the elderberry. Uh, we talked about the wild cherry bark. Um, and again, we can use this for a runny nose, nasal congestion, sore throat, headache and fever, pains and chills, um, excess phlegm, sneezing. Again, because we're seeing um, these other ingredients that are super supportive um, for these other immune components. Uh, so we do have echinacea in here. Um, there's also a catnip, which can help to reduce fever, um, a bit immunostimulant as well, anise, thyme, again, antimicrobial immune stimulating. Um, and then it also has um, essential oils, which are A, um, antimicrobial, but B, make it taste good. Um, so there is some sweetness in here with the honey, also with the glycerin. Um, me personally, I find it too sweet. I actually really like our adult formulation, but again, some kiddos are just more, more drawn to this. And again, it's a better, um, option sometimes for them that it's not as, as herbally, but it's still really, really quite effective and it still tastes good. Um, so pro tip, you can add this to hot water for a soothing beverage. Again, you can do this as part of like a nighttime ritual. Um, ideally we'd want to dose this, um, uh, you know, uh, three times a day, if we could, again, if we can access that, um, or if kids are home and we can give it to them more often, but again, if you're only giving it to them once a day, like before they go to bed or before they're off to school in the morning, this is still, um, a good option for them. If you're sending oh, them to Dr. B, yeah. I have a question for you. I know the answer, but I think it'd be a good one. Sure. Uh, marshmallow. So marshmallow is one of my favorite herbs. Maybe explain why marshmallow would be, uh, in this formula as well. Yeah, you bet. Great question. So marshmallow is in this formulation. Um, it has a component, what we call mucilage. So essentially it's con a constituent that coats and soothes and protects irritated tissues. Um, so you can think about the whole like respiratory passage, the throat, because even like our throat spray has marshmallow in it. So it's going to coat and soothe um, that irritated tissue. So reducing pain, reducing irritation, um, within that area. And it's really interesting because it also works on what we call the mucociliary, mucociliary escalator. So it's the tiny hairs in the respiratory passage uh, that help to expel infection. So it's working on um, these various mechanisms as well. So we can see some um, symptom relief in the lungs um, and the respiratory passage, um, as well as to acting as a mechanism to facilitate the removal of that infectious debris. But yeah, marshmallow is awesome for any sore mucous membrane, throat, stomach, lungs. It's fabulous. Great question. And as I mentioned, it's also in our throat spray. So um, maybe not for, for kiddos. Like I don't see why they couldn't use it, um, but definitely in adults. <laughs> I, lo I love the throat spray. That's one of my faves. Um, okay, if there's no other questions on that, then I'll shift into the chest rub. Uh, so the chest rub is a, a topical respiratory formula that draws on the healing properties of various essential oils. So eucalyptus, peppermint, scotch pine, um, and when I say like a topical respiratory formula, um, it's kind of like a Vicks Vapor Rub or like a natural Vicks Vapor Rub, um, where we're applying it typically to the chest because A, it's going to absorb through the skin into the chest, um, carrying these different 
um, essential oils with it that are very specific to the respiratory passage. But A, it's also, you're going to have that aromatherapy benefit where you're still smelling and inhaling these antimicrobial um, essential oils that are very, very specific to the respiratory passage. Um, so I always talk about like the, the smelly plants or the smelly trees, those smelly herbs, very, very rich in those volatile oils. Um, and those are very specific to lung tissue and antimicrobial at, at that tissue. So if you're inhaling it or you're again, getting that absorption, really, really fantastic that way. Um, if for whatever reason, like you don't want to have it on the chest, you can actually apply it to the soles of um, the kiddo's feet um, because like kids, especially like young children are porous. They're little, they're little sponges, um, but also this works in adults that you'll actually absorb these different constituents through the soles of your feet. Um, if you don't believe me, take a clove of garlic, rub it on the bottom of your feet. Garlic is actually a, one of those volatile oils that's eliminated through the chest. So you can actually get garlic breath by like rubbing um, garlic on the soles of your feet. Um, you wouldn't necessarily exhale these volatile oils, but again, you'll get that quick acting um, or um, tissue specific action of these various volatile oils to that respiratory passage. Um, so we're looking to relieve this chest congestion um, that can accompany coughs and colds, um, even just that like um, dilation of the bronchioles or like the respiratory passage, that dilation of the blood vessels. So we're getting um, better blood flow to that area. So again, either carrying those either nutrients or herbs that are working to support um, those different immune complexes or those immune agents. And then again, flushing out that immune debris um, or any of the infectious kind of agents. So we're crossing that skin barrier with a deep penetrating power to help soothe the respiratory passages. Um, and when we talk about like application on kiddos and, and even when we talk about um, internal applications of her these herbs, we do recommend um, two and older. If we're seeing this with infants, what I'm typically recommending is um, the kiddos care provider putting it on their chest. So if you're snuggling and, and baby's inhaling that um, and just even that close proximity, they're going to get the benefits of that inhalation of those various essential oils that work on that respiratory passage. So we don't necessarily want to put um, strong essential oils on babies, but again, if they're inhaling that from, from their care provider um, with those snuggles, then, then again, that's a good application as well. So it is a, I'm just going to make sure I pull up the correct, I believe it's shea. Yeah. Virgin olive oil, there is glycerin and there's shea butter in there as well. Um, and then there's some vitamin E honeysuckle flower extract as a um, slight preservative or stabilizer. Um, but a beneficial way is just warming that bomb, you know, between your fingers before application. It isn't a pump, so it's pretty easy to apply. Um, and I just think it's wonderful. And I think it's a really easy product swap because um, a lot of people are familiar with like a Vicks Vaporub, um, but this doesn't have all the extra crap <laughs> in it. Um, and it's very, very targeted again towards um, the, the respiratory passage in those bronchioles. Um, and it's just a really nice kind of ritual with your kiddos um, as well. Okay, our ear oil. Okay, so our ear oil is looking to soothe the pain and discomfort of ear aches. Um, and this could be either like an internal ear infection or this, so that's like um, otitis interna, so ear, like inside the ear, um, and also otitis externa, so like external um, ear infections, or sometimes we call this swimmer's ear, um, where it's more so the infection is within the ear canal itself, as opposed to in inside or internally to, to the eardrum, and it's more so in that, like you, we call it that eustachian tube. Kids are definitely more prone to ear infections, just based on the development development of these tube structures. Um, they're not as vertical. So again, um, draining isn't as efficient. Again, they can't necessarily regulate pressure in their ears. And again, it's their, um, 
their immune system, just building um, tolerance or building uh, immunity to these various types of infections. So ear, ear infections are definitely more in common in kiddos. Um, so it does have mullen, so 100% certified organic mullen, which is a traditional herbal treatment for ear aches. Um, and it does have other really interesting ingredients with in this as well. Um, calendula is a very soothing, um, a very soothing herb. Again, kind of similar to like in talking about the uh, marshmallow, calendula is going to calm and soothe irritated tissues. Um, it's kind of like the polysporin of the herbal world. So especially like an external ear infection or swimmer's ear, this can really help. Or if kiddos have even... Um, uh, like eczema in their ears, this can also be helpful for, for healing that irritated skin as well. Now, garlic is within this product and garlic is a really fantastic um, antimicrobial, so antifungal, um, also can be antiviral as well. So a lot of ear, internal ear infections um, in particular are actually viral in origin. That's why a lot of times they're not necessarily recommending antibiotics for ear infections. Um, and then St. John's wort, fabulous antiviral, um, as well as uh, an analgesic are really, really helpful for pain. So that earache, that pain, that discomfort associated with ear infections, it can be really quite useful. Um, and this is all in a carrier of um, uh, certified organic extra virgin olive oil. Um, so this is alcohol free. We don't need to, to use those different um, alcohols as a solvent or tincture that um, prior to that administration. Um, you can have the child like lay on their side um, for applying the eardrops um, internally. Um, that's usually the quickest access <laughs> and applying the drops that way. Um, some people will use like those cotton, cotton balls and you can saturate the cotton ball and then put that within the ear canal. They're also not getting it dripping out after the fact. Some people, if they're doing the drops directly into the ear, then they might use a cotton ball after the fact. So it doesn't spill out. Um, but pretty easy to administer and again can be really quite effective. Um, if you're aiming to do this like before your kiddo goes to bed, that's a great option. Um, if you can do multiple doses during the day, that might be more helpful as well. Again, kind of stimulating it um, more often can be more helpful with infection. Okay. So I just have this little chart here um, to simplify the application or just have a quick snapshot of when you would use certain products or again, if there are certain considerations that we're looking at. So deep immune, so if we want a proactive approach, so if we just, I, I almost went to cover my slide, but if we just look at this first column, so this proactive, if we're looking all about prevention, so especially this time of year with like back to school or like before cold and flu season, uh, we'd either be looking at deep immune kids or deep immune honey and berry. Um, and then this would be either, you know, our regular formulation or we have our alcohol free, right? So you're kind of choosing within um, that category. And then also in that proactive category, we're seeing our vitamin D, okay? So first sign of infection, we would drop our, our deep immune and we would shift into a reactive formulation. And whether that be the Echinacea Plus or the alcohol-free version of the Echinacea Plus uh, with the elderberry, um, that would be a good option as well. As I talked about, the elderberry cough syrup could be used in isolation, like you might not need to use the Echinacea uh, Plus in that reactive state um, or in that alcohol-free version. You could use it on and on on its own, but again, it's very, very, very specific for cough. Could you use the Echinacea Plus or the Echinacea Plus with elderberry in conjunction with a cough syrup? Absolutely you could, right? I'd say we either want one of those proactives or one of those like reactives, and then we can use those adjunct products appropriately. Um, and the vitamin D, you would take that all the time. Take that in the summer, take that in the winter. Vitamin D, you need to take every day. Okay. Um, I don't, we, 
based on our climate, based on um, our exposure to the sun, based on um, if you're putting on sunscreen on your kiddos, we're blocking sometimes that absorption of vitamin D. Take vitamin D every day, okay? If you're forgetting, because it's a fat soluble vitamin, you can adjust your dosage and you could take it once a week, but just make sure you're taking that daily dose equivalency to once a week. But ideally, take it every day. Um, and vitamin D is something to be consistent throughout the year. Um, so again, I've marked those alcohol free products. And then from a vegan standpoint, if that was something that you're concerned about, or you have, um, you're, that's just something that you're wanting, wanting to be conscious of, um, because they contain colostrum, they are not vegan with the exception of the cough syrup. Um, and then just as an FYI, vitamin D, unless it's sourced from algae, is technically not vegan. Um, it's based off of lanolin, which is related to, to sheep products. It's part of like their coat, um, which is where most vitamin D is, is sourced from, unless I mentioned it's from like an algae base. Um, also considering if somebody is vegan versus vegan, like does that person consume honey? Because I know there's some people um, that are very strict vegans and if even animals or insects are making it like honey, um, just a consideration that a fair bit of these products do also have honey in them. Um, so that's just a, a consideration there. Um, but again, the vegan product would be that elderberry cough syrup. So uh, just a snapshot there. So I want to thank you for joining me this evening. And I think we've been fairly, we did pretty well for time. And um, it's been fairly quiet in the Q&A and in the chat. But if you have any questions, uh, feel free to pop that in there. And again, I'm I'm here to answer questions. Johnny is um, uh, moderating or um, managing the, the chat and the questions as well. Um, and as a thank you, um, all of these products discussed this evening are 20% off with a Healthy Planet. Uh, what's really nice about tinctures, um, so not the alcohol-free versions, but tinctures in and of themselves um, have a very long shelf life. <laughs> Uh, a true tincture with no glycerin or those kinds of things have like five, 10 year um, expiry dates. Um, again, this is fantastic time to stock up um, heading into cold and flu season. Um, and again, if we're trying to figure out um, from a palatability perspective, compliance perspective, what your kiddos are gravitating towards. Um, so 20% off on Healthy Planet. Um and I think that's all from me. And read all of the adorable insect facts. Like they'll blow your mind. And I just think it's the cutest thing. So Johnny, if you have anything to say. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Brianna. Uh, again, uh, Healthy Planet's website is healthyplanetcanada.com. Uh, so all of those, all of these products are available on their website. Um, and again, yeah, there's no questions in the chat box. I think Dr. Brianna, that's a testament to you. Um, with just the information um, and then sharing everything that's needed. Uh, there is a questions about uh, the recording. Um, so the recording is done through Healthy Planet. Um, so it's actually will be recorded and posted on their YouTube link. Um, so what I'll do right now is I'll just copy that link and, and paste it, uh, copy and paste it um, in the chat box right now. So if anyone wants the recording, uh, likely it's, it'll probably take a day or two before they go ahead and, and post it on there. And then there's just a question about, um, the facts on insects. It's on all of our packaging. Um, so there's, we feature ladybug, we feature, um, bumblebees and butterflies. And on each, um, package, there is a insect fact. So even if you are shopping in store with your kiddos, um, or when you bring the product home or you, or you get that product, you can go over that, um, with them, the little insect fact. I think we have some type of ladybug, um, I don't know. I saw, I saw promo pictures with like actual, like not actual, like real ladybugs, but, uh, yeah. Johnny, do you, do you have any insight on that marketing from a marketing thing? Well, I know they're doing tattoos and, and yeah, we have a trade show coming up and I think they're trying to 
Like the kid line is going to be the focus for for that trade show. So they're going to try to get as many tattoos on people as possible. So uh, that'll be fun. Uh, I did post the 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 Healthy Planet website uh, in the chat box as well. As much as we'd love everyone to buy every single product to get all those facts, uh, you can go on their website and and check out the products and zoom in on on the product packaging if you really want to see if you're really interested on those facts as well. So. Yeah. And then there's just a question. Uh, so deep immune for kids, uh, do you do the drops all at once for the recommended dose or, um, can you split it up? Um, ideally, um, I, and I believe for the deep immune for kids, it's a, it's a twice a day dose. I usually, uh, get people to, to book in their day. So like when they're getting ready in the morning and then when they're getting ready in the evening, um, for that two dose, if you can only get it in once a day, that is a okay. And I usually just do that full dosage like in one hit um but again if we can stimulate the uh especially the the reactive if we can dose more frequently and stimulate the immune system like that's ideal um but when it comes to like the deep immune like if you're just doing it once a day i'm i'm okay with that that's often how i dose it in in my practice no problem Okay, we did it. I think this is a record of keeping it to the hour. That's <laughs> and then I I don't know if we have anything on on the docket for the future um, with Healthy Planet. If I'm scheduled for anything, uh, um, we do, we do. Yeah. We have something coming up. Um, let me just pull it up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something coming up in the next few months. Okay. I believe. Yeah, it's on uh, Monday, November 13th. Okay. And likely that'll be focused either on cold and flu or stress and sleep. Um, so we'll just have to decide seeing on what we want to collaborate with Healthy Planet on. Uh, and then once we do confirm that collaboration, they'll, they'll, there'll be an e-blast that goes out and it'll be posted on their website as well. Uh, and then just a question. So kids that are sensitive to cold weather and ear aches with deep immune BNF, um, I think that'd be a nice option uh, internally for sure. Um, just upregulate their immune system uh, if they're more prone to ear aches or more ear infections. Uh, the drops might be a really nice addition to that as well, um, especially like in the winter months um, when they're just like more prone to irritation or ear aches or again the weather the cold weather they're more susceptible to it uh the drops can be quite quite useful as well yeah and and it goes a long way those drops and vitamin d <laughs> perfect all right well i think that's everything great yeah. thank you so much for your time and attention and and joining on monday night especially kind of getting in that back to school um, mindset. So I appreciate everybody's time and have a good rest of your night. Thanks everyone. Thanks Dr. B, appreciate it. Thanks, okay, bye now. Have a good night.